as I discovered earlier this year, when I drove the Arkimoto FUV for the weekend, the two-seat, three-wheel tadpole is exactly what the moniker of its backronym suggests. A fun utility vehicle. On paper, it shouldn't make you smile so much. On paper, it shouldn't make you want to take it over a conventional car. And thanks to its wit, it's got all of the fun of a motorcycle, but very few of the benefits. Yet I fell in love because, as I said at the time, it wasn't trying to be a car. It wasn't trying to be a motorcycle. It was just being itself. Then in July this year, the day after I'd moved to Oregon and met my boss face to face for only the second time, some of the team from this channel headed to the Portland International Raceway, where we attended the FUV and Friends Day. We saw plenty of interesting and novel takes on the Arkimoto, from its deliverator and rapid responder to a semi-autonomous robo-taxi and pickup truck. I got to drive the FUV for the first time, experience a prototype FUV fitted with a phenomenal torque vectoring power steering system from Staffel Systems, and both Nikki and I got to try out the Arkimoto Roadster, a topless, cruiser-inspired trike you need a motorcycle license to ride. But there's a big difference between a spin around the track and the real world, which is why, for the last two weeks, Arkimoto has lent us not one, but two roadsters to play with. And today, it's time for us to let you know our thoughts. So Winter, we've had the Roadsters now for a week and I don't know about you, but I've been finding excuses to take it out on the road at every opportunity. I very much have done the same. I mean, I, I've put about 400 miles on it in the time I've had it. Yes, I put probably about 600 miles on it. Included time when I was going to the Ford Mustang Mark E GT performance launch. And so I decided to just take it to the airport at like four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> as you do. I have used it to run errands, to go, I put a tail bag from one of my motorcycles on the back of it, and I went grocery shopping a few times. But I also have just gone out to have fun. One thing that I think we need to call out Arkimoto on is the way that this is marketed and the way that people that I've spoken to have said, oh yeah, it's like a, like a motorbike, it's very easy to ride. I don't think it is. No, I, I would agree, coming from a motorcyclist perspective, the techniques you need to ride the Roadster are really different than a motorcycle, and in fact, some of them are absolutely opposite. On one of these, there is absolutely nothing graceful and nothing easy about steering a roadster. It is a very brute force machine to steer, and you're not counter steering at all. You know, if I want to go, I'm going to turn right now, and to do that, I'm going to push very, very hard on my left handlebar, and I'm going to pull a bit on my right handlebar. If I did that in a motorcycle, it would be a disaster. And when you put a pillion on the back, you really have to watch out for the snap oversteer way more. So my experience of this tadpole this week is that it has understeered at every single opportunity. And now you're saying it's oversteering? It's the worst understeering vehicle I've ever encountered, I think. But that's because it's a tadpole. That's what tadpoles do. Yeah. However, if you're in a corner and you're like, oh, I went into this corner too hot and you ease off the throttle, or you hit like hard, or you hit the regen, it wants to snap oversteer like an MR2 or a, or a you know, VW Beetle. I had you on last night as a pillion passenger, and I felt pretty secure. That said, I, I think I remember telling you at the time, I moved my body weight right forward, and I kind of sat in a more upright, grippy the tank position like I would on a motorbike. Now you said as a passenger, 
I live up in the mountains, so a mountain pass down to the freeway. You said you didn't like that very much. I think from a pillion passenger perspective, there are things that could be done to make it better. There needs to be something to hold on to. Because of the arrangement of the bike, you can't really hold on to your rider when you're the pillion. We've got the faux tank, uh, <laughs> but we don't have really anything else to grip hold of. And because your feet are not on pegs, your feet are just resting on the footboards, there's nothing that you can hook your heel around, which I think, hmm. I think is something that as a, a biker, I really enjoy having. One thing I've noticed about riding the roadster is how much attention you get. Oh goodness, yes. Not to mention when you stop someplace. <laughs> Last time I took this thing grocery shopping, I think I spent as long in the parking lot explaining it to excited people as I did getting <laughs> my damn groceries. I had someone say to me like, so is it from China? And I said, no, it's, it's made in Eugene. He, his eyes got really white. I said, really? I said, yeah. He said, they make this here in Oregon. Yep, they do. So we've had the FUVs now for two weeks, actually. Two weeks, yep. We were supposed to go back last week, but Arkimoto were really kind and let us have an extra week because the weather last week was abysmal. We'd both been away for trips. So what excuse are we going to give to try to get it for another week? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because you want to keep it. I do. I, I really like having it and I really enjoy it. And I, I'll admit, I find it a little bit hard to explain why. One of the things that we've talked a fair bit about with this machine is how much it's an FUV with a different body on it. And right. that shows up, I think, in the way that it doesn't really feel like it was designed for ATGAT riders. Um, I would also pay to have the brake pedal moved backwards. So the brake pedal has to be moved. The current position of the brake pedal is, is absolutely unacceptable to me. I mean, my motorcycle boots make working the brake pedal on that thing a bit awkward. The brake pedal is just too close to the firewall. We have not seen any evidence that this machine has ABS. At this price point, ABS should be an absolute given. And to be honest, in modern motorcycling at this price point, so should traction control. Um, and you and I disagree on this, but I think at this price point, in the motorcycle market, cruise control is basically a bog sandwich. You'd be hard pressed to buy a motorcycle for 18 or 20 grand today that didn't have cruise control. I've never had a motorcycle with cruise Neither control. Neither have I. Um, I haven't either, and it's not saying that I terribly miss most of the time. Occasionally I do, my wrist gets sore. But I'm just saying, it has fly-by-wire throttle. Right. It costs, you know, nearly 20 grand. Cruise control would be a thing that would make sense to have, and ABS is saying it absolutely should have. I would love to have DC quick charging on this. You know what? I thought about that. I would love to have DC quick charging, but I honestly think if it could charge at seven kilowatts from an AC station, even that would be a really big deal. You could park at a, at a you know, level two charger and recoup a lot of power pretty quickly. So what, how much range have you got out of it? If I get, if I get 70 miles, I'm super happy. I got 80 out of it once. And I'm guessing there wasn't a lot of motorway. No, no. Yeah. If you could lose that really useful front storage space, right? If you could get that to almost a flat floor, that would be really accessible for someone who maybe can't ride a motorcycle anymore because of mobility or balance issues. I think there's a real untapped market for Arkimoto with the FUV and the Roadster for people with mobility impairments. And a lot of people who ride trikes ride trikes yeah. because they have mobility issues or balance using issues yeah. a two-wheeled vehicle mm -hmm. if that lead and to be clear Arkimoto bought a company that specialized in leaning three-wheelers oh it's coming so i think that with leaning could be on the horizon it's coming it's, if it has that to be. could lean it would be fantastic there are multiple different types of vehicles that we review every year. There are the yep. ones that we want to keep. Yep. They're the ones that we want to hand back. Yep. There are the ones that we can't wait to get rid of. <laughs> uh, and then there are the ones that you want to hide. 
And I think you and I are both in that last category with this one. Yeah, I am... When I picked it up and rode it home, I was like, all right, fine. This will be a thing I do for a week and then it turned into two weeks. But as I got more and more time on it and I got better at using it and better at riding it and I, I just came to really, really love it. I, I really did. And it, it, it totally blindsided me how much I like this machine because I can see so many things about it that should be better. But I just, the whole is so much more than the sum of its parts. It's such a fabulous, fabulous piece of machinery. So there you have it, the Arkimoto Roadster FUV. Winter, have you had fun? I have had so much fun with this thing. Thanks so much to Arkimoto for hooking us up with not one, but two roadsters for two whole weeks. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our 15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month Patreon supporters, David Janakula, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahoa, Brophy Wolf, Tazlet in the Gong, I just dropped my glove, Sean Ueda, Gordon C, Raging Fellows, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ricky Leon, Brian Newton, Laura Sanborn, Rory Litwin and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude goes to our $100 a month Patreon supporters. They are John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnik, Christopher Lee Jones, Paul Conray, Ellery Hennersley, and Ian. And a special welcome to those of you who have just joined the Transport Evolved Patreon family. We have been doing a lot in the last couple of weeks and Erin has been busy on a top secret project so we haven't been able to do any new animations yet, but we will be very shortly. So if your name's not in the list, fear not, it will be added very soon. Don't forget you can support us through Patreon, Bitcoin and Ko-fi. And if you'd like to see us do more crazy things like this, let us know in the comments below. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. And I'm Winter Tashlin. And as always, keep, keep evolving. evolving.